Ливии. Burns by Brian Harper. Burns are amongst the most distressing injuries someone can experience. They are often unpleasant in appearance and certainly can be extremely painful. Burns can be disfiguring and even life-threatening. When providing first aid to someone who has been burnt, remember good bedside manner. Care for the injured person as well as the burn. It's important that rescuers of burn victims don't forget the fundamentals of basic life support. Although a burned individual's pain and emotional distress may be severe, as in all emergency situations, the priorities in care are for scene safety, followed by circulation, airway and breathing. When establishing if a scene is safe, it's important to determine whether the source of the burn, which may be a fire or hot stove for example, remains a hazard and to respond accordingly. If a person is actually on fire, they should be encouraged to stop, drop and roll as rescuers attempt to smother or douse the flames. Caregivers should never place themselves at risk of being burnt or inhaling smoke or being trapped by fire in order to provide first aid. Circulation, airway and breathing also warrant special attention in burn victims. Exposure to intense heat can cause airway swelling, smoke inhalation and can impair breathing or risk the loss of fluids due to the burns which can lead to shock. This is a form of cardiovascular emergency. When assessing airway and breathing, note any coughing or wheezing due to the presence of soot, ash or redness around the nose and mouth. These are clues that can improve a rescuer's understanding of any respiratory symptoms that may be present. A burn occurs when the body's tissues are subjected to more energy than they can tolerate. This energy can come from chemicals, heat, radiation or electricity. Chemical burns are caused by contact with a caustic chemical. If the chemical is dry, assist the injured individual by brushing off the substance and consult a material safety data sheet, which should be present whenever caustic chemicals are used. If there is no MSDS, flush with copious amounts of water. Chemical burns are not particularly common in outback settings, whereas thermal burns are quite common and they may result from accidents involving fires or stoves. Thermal burns can result from direct contact with a flame or a hot solid object such as a camp stove or even a hot liquid such as boiling water. Thermal burns are actually not the most common. Radiation burns related to sunlight are actually the most common. In fact, the sun burns more outdoor enthusiasts than all the other sources combined. Finally, electrical burns can occur in various settings, including lightning strike. First aid priorities. After ensuring the scene is safe and quickly addressing the circulation airway breathing, rescuers should douse the burn with cool water. Either fresh or salt water will do and the cleanliness of the water is not particularly important since cooling down is the main goal here. The irrigation should continue for at least 15 to 30 minutes. It may sound like a long time, but it's important to stop the burning process that's happening in the deeper tissues. Actually, this example is well known by cooks, who know that meat continues cooking even after it's removed from the oven. Clothing, particularly boots or shoes, should be removed immediately to prevent continued exposure and also to avoid the problem when swelling makes it impossible or very difficult to remove later. Assessment Once a burn has been thoroughly cooled, the caregiver should begin to assess the injury. There are three criteria to guide the assessment. Its depth, the extent and the location. Remember to make notes because these can be passed on to paramedics or emergency workers, nurses or physicians. Burns are classified as either superficial, partial thickness or full thickness. 
superficial burns, not surprisingly, are the least severe of the three and are characterized by redness, warmth and sometimes swelling. Partial thickness burns involve deeper layers of skin and have the presence of blisters and severe pain. Full thickness burns affect all the layers of skin and destroy nerves and fatty tissue. Full thickness burns may also appear black or charred or white and waxy. They are sometimes described as being painless because the nerve tissue has all been destroyed. While this may be technically accurate, full thickness burns are often surrounded by areas of partial thickness burns that can be intensely painful. The extent of a burn is the percentage of total body surface area it covers. A person's palm, excluding the fingers, is around 1%. This can help the caregiver to estimate the burn's extent. In addition to the depth and extent of a burn, the particular location on the body may be noted as well. There are special function areas that warrant particular attention. These include the face, neck, hands, feet, groin and armpits. The face and neck are important not only because of the airway issue, but also because it significantly affects quality of life. The same is true for the hand, foot and groin. Any burn that goes all the way around a limb can impair circulation and also deserves special attention. Subsequent treatment. Once a burn has been thoroughly cooled and assessed, wash it gently with clean soapy water and rinse it thoroughly and pat dry. Don't break any intact blisters but bits of clothing and small areas of debris or dead skin can be trimmed away. Dress and bandage the wound with a non-adherent dressing, such as Adaptic or Jelonet. It's also appropriate to use double antibiotic ointment as a gauze pad, but it's important to thoroughly cool the wound first. Change dressings daily to check for infection. Superficial and small partial thickness burns can usually be managed in the field. Aloe gel, ibuprofen or topical over-the-counter creams may help relieve symptoms. Sunburn should be covered to ensure that it doesn't get any worse. Any partial thickness burn that covers more than 15% of a person's body must be evaluated promptly by a doctor. The pain from such a burn would be difficult to manage in the field anyway and there's a risk of significant fluid loss. Any full thickness burns also warrant immediate evacuation to medical care. The risk of infection, fluid loss and other complications are beyond the scope of field management. As with any injury, a burn is easier to prevent than to treat. So take care around flames, hot objects, boiling water, electricity and caustic chemicals. Take cover during thunderstorms and protect yourself from the sun. If you are faced with caring for someone who's been burned, stay calm, ensure the scene is safe, assess circulation, airway breathing and cool the burn by pouring water on it. When in doubt, cool it down some more.